Hey everyone, Chris Kelly here with Production Crate. Hey, Adrian Jensen, also with Production Crate. How about that? Today, we're gonna to be teaching you some really, really cool techniques for how we built this trapdoor effect. Things like camera calibration and projection mapping, extremely valuable techniques for visual effects. Yeah, let's do it. Let's start by creating a camera, okay? Cool. With Shift-C, you can search for any tool, tag, whatever you want in Cinema 4D. Let's search for the camera calibrator tag and double click it to add it to our camera. Boom. With your camera calibrator tag selected, go to Image tab and load up your clean plate. Dang, that looks clean. Make sure to have a clean plate, by the way. Yeah, yeah, good tip. <laughs> now is a good time to make sure your C4D project settings match your video settings. Same frame rate, same dimensions, all that good stuff. Here you can see three different ways to calibrate your camera to your scene. You can add a line, you can add a grid, you can add a pin. Let's start with a line, okay? Sure. This technique is great if your scene has a lot of straight lines going on all 3D axes like ours. It's You're indoors. Not lying about that. <laughs> <laughs> That was kind of good. Yeah, but yeah. If you shot this in an entirely natural location outside or whatever, you might not be able to find lines in your scene and you're gonna have to calibrate them a different way. Sorry, my nature loving friends. When you add a line, you'll have endpoints. Line those up onto any straight line in your scene. We'll start with this line right here on the ground. You can shift click your line to define what axis it is. We want this one to be our X axis, so we can shift click it until it turns red. You can always reference your axis colors at the bottom left here. This is a helpful, helpful little tool. Let's add a few more lines. Keep an eye on your calibration status here. The goal is to get everything to turn green. Green is, is the color of good. This second line will make our Z axis, so shift click it until it turns blue. We can use the window here for some straight lines as well, and the corner for our Y axis. Why? Because it is. That's, why, why are you asking me? <laughs> I don't know, but we're really making some headway now. Check out the calibration status. Let's add a grid next. It would be nice to have a few more obvious lines visible on the ground, but we can probably get away with this. The grids work in a similar way as the lines. You can move individual corners or the entire section. You can shift click the lines to be the color of your axis. One grid, four lines. We do want to add more than one line here. Even though we can't see the corner because of the wood, we can guess pretty accurately where it is using these lines where the ground and the wall connect as a reference. If we see our line turn blue, it means that the software agrees with us that that is on our Z axis and it lines up with the other blue lines. That's great. We still have some yellow here on our calibration, which means we aren't perfect, but we are close enough for our needs. Let's add a pin. We want our pin to be on our ground plane and at the end of one of our lines, preferably somewhere near the center of the frame. This corner here that we just guessed at is actually a perfect place for our pin, so we're just going to drag this orange circle, which represents our pin, onto that corner. We are almost done. Cool. Hoorah! For, li <laughs> for a little bit more accuracy, we can enter some information. We can guess or we can take actual measurements of the space. We know that this line is about 12 feet or 365 centimeters. So with that line selected, we can check known length and just enter that number. Now we can hit create camera mapping tag and create a background object. Let us do a quick test. We can create a cube and already we can see it looks like it sits nicely on our ground plane, which job, is buddy. dope. With your cube selected, hit C, make it editable. Let's go to Mesh Axis Center and select Axis Center. Now let's drop the Y <laughs> axis to negative 100 and make sure X and Z are set to zero. Now we can scale our cube down with T. Hit nine and now we can move our cube around. We wanna see if it stays on these lines in our scene sticking flat to the ground plane. It actually does look like it's doing a pretty good job, but here it does kind of look like it's going off a little bit, but I would say that it's accurate enough for what we need. If we were to do this again, maybe we would shoot it with an actual grid laid out on the ground to get a few more lines into our scene, but that's okay. We can just delete that cube and make a new one. Let's make the segments 20 by 20 by 20 and hit C to make it editable. Let's Yum. do the opposite of what we did before with the axis center tool and move our axis point to the top of the cube by making Y 100 and hitting execute. Now in the cube coordinates, we can set the position of Y to zero and our cube top will be in line with our ground plane. 
Let's position the cube where we want our trap door to be. Hit T and scale on the Y axis to decide how thick you want your door. Once you have the door in the position you want, you can make a duplicate if you want to have two doors, which uh, we do. So that's what we're doing. You can have as many doors as you want. Probably, probably go with two. One or two, that would be my suggestion. True. We can duplicate our cube by selecting it, holding control and dragging. Let's move our axis center to the opposite sides of each cube where our door hinges will be. We moved ours on the X axis, so X 100% for one cube and X negative 100 for the other. Now we can just scale our cubes down by 0.5 on the X axis. Actually, before we do that, let's create a third duplicate of this cube and we're gonna use it later. You'll see, just trust, trust us. And then scale down the doors, leaving the third cube at full scale. You can shift alt click these two dots to turn off the visibility of the newest cube. We don't wanna see him, but we like knowing he's there. It makes me feel safe. Yeah, same. Double click your door, cubes, and name them. We went with close door and far door. Makes sense. If we rotate these around, we can see how they will be working like doors in the ground. <laughs> they work great, actually. Mm -hmm. Let's add a protection tag to our camera. We don't want to be messing around with it now that it's been calibrated to the correct position. Once we've done that, we can jump out of camera view mode. F2 will bring us into top view mode. With one of our doors selected, go to your polygon view option here. Under select, we can choose rectangle selection and toggle only select visible elements. Now we can select the top plane of our door, then go to select set selection. Do the same for the other door. F1 is going to bring us back into our normal perspective mode. You'll see these orange polygon selection tags on your doors. These store the polygons from the top plane of your door. And this is how we're going to set our camera mapped image to just the top plane. Drag the projection texture tag from your camera onto your doors by holding control and dragging to duplicate. Our doors will now be invisible because our camera is projecting the exact image from our clean plate right onto the doors. That's what makes them a, a, an effective trap. You can't watch out for them because you can't see them. Select the texture on one of your doors. Under tag and selection, you can drag those orange triangle polygon selection tags. Now we are just projecting to that top plane. If we jump out of camera view, we can see we have created a realistic surface, but if we rotate the doors, we can see that the projection map is not sticking with them. All right, that's an easy fix. Click on the texture tag on your door and select generate UVW coordinates. Do that for both doors. Now our projected texture sticks and we can rotate our doors. One thing to note here is if your poly count is too low, like just a few polygons, the textures might get mapped on a little bit funky. So that's why we went with 20 by 20 by 20 for our cube segments earlier. Let's make a ground plane next. All this right. is, you, you cool with that? Yeah, it's fine. This is just gonna be a mat for the underground chamber. We don't wanna see through the ground itself and see that chamber that shall ruin the illusion. <laughs> It should be on the Y axis already, so just position it using Z and X. Hit C to make it editable and scale it to cover the entire ground. Make a bool next in the instance tab. Make a make a bool, make, make a, a make a bool. <laughs> The bool tool will let us use our full cube, the duplicate that we didn't turn into a door to be cut out of our ground plane so that we can see through the hole that the doors are gonna open up. Drag your ground plane underneath the bool and the cube underneath the ground plane. You want whatever you're cutting to be directly underneath the bool and then the shape that you're cutting out of it directly underneath that. We can disable our door object visibility to see what's going on a little bit better. With our Boodle cube selected, let's scale it on the Y axis to cut out that ground plane perfectly. All right, all right, all right. Next, let's create our chamber. Let's create a duplicate of one of our doors and then just delete that texture off of it. Set the X size back to one. Jump out of camera view again and go into your top view. In your polygon view mode, select your top polygons. You can do this just how we did it before or you can just use the polygon selection tag by selecting it and then choosing select polygons. Now delete them. What we have now is a box with no lid. How are Whoa. we gonna, how are we gonna trap, how, Never mind. We want to scale this up on the Y axis, so set your axis center to be at the top of the Y axis with the axis center tool. X0, Y100, and Z0. Now with hockey T, we can choose the Y axis and scale it up, or I guess it, it would be scaling it down into the ground. This is a super deep chamber. What do you think is at the bottom? 
I hope it's pillows. Let us know in the comments below what you think is at the bottom of this chamber. Now let's disable the background object and rotate the doors. Now we can really see this effect coming together, finally. Hey. From here on out, it's just gonna be texturing and shadows. You can also move your door's hinge. We decided we didn't wanna see the back of the door at all, so we moved our hinges to the top corners using the axis sensor tool. Easy peasy. We textured the chamber with a cement texture and just keyframed the rotation of the doors. Instead of rotating our doors a full 90 degrees, we went with 80 to 85-ish. Offsetting their timing is gonna help a little bit as well to add some realism. The ground plane is a matte object using the compositing tag. All it's doing is making sure that the chamber is not visible to the camera. We have some lights in our scene and we did a separate pass with a shadow catcher. Cinema 4D does have a shadow catcher material built in, but it uh, kind of sucks in our opinion. Octane does have a great one, but we wanted to try and do this with just the internal C4D renderer for this. So we dropped a green material onto our doors and we dropped the reflectance all the way down. And then we just keyed out that green and after effects, leaving some shadow, which sells the effect just a bit more. For the shadows that Adrian would be casting onto the chamber, all we did was build a simple cylinder with some simple cylinder arms to cast those shadows. We turned off visibility to camera so we could only see the shadows it was casting. We did a little compositing work inside of After Effects, but it was pretty minimal. We added some motion blur, masking, you know, stuff like that. To make it look like I'm actually falling down into the chamber, I had to do a little bit of rotoscoping, cut myself out, and then just animate myself falling down with a couple of position keyframes. If you want to learn a bit more about rotoscoping, we do have a pro rotoscoping course that'll teach you everything you need to know about rotoscoping and After Effects. So why don't you check that out if you're, uh, if you're willing to learn. Link below. Link below. We also made sure to make Adrian darker as he fell down, like shadows were being cast onto him from the chamber walls. We just did this with a simple alpha mat. Whoop whoop. Alpha mat. Alpha mat. All the sound effects and the music that were in this thing are from soundscrate.com. Go to soundscrate.com if you want to get the sound effects and the musics that were in this thing. If you want more Cinema 4D tutorials. I don't know that. You gotta tell us. You gotta tell us that we don't. We can't read your minds, man. Bye. All right, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good. <laughs>